dotted line. Plan Philadelphia, freedom ring, and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Nothing in green for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at Some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. Liberty! Die with the king! Freedom! Hurrah! We'll drive these pesky rebels into the river and have our troops home in time for Christmas. British regulars! They're right behind me! They're running? Why are they running? Because they can't fly. Dearest mother, where to begin? James Henri and I have been in New York City for a week now. General Washington, the commander of the American army, has been busy fortifying the city and harbor. And no wonder with the arrival of the British fleet. What a sight! Some say there are so many masts that it looks like a floating forest. You were so kind to ask Mrs. Radcliffe to give us lodgings. They are quite restful. Down with the king! I'm sorry I cannot say the same for New York. Ever since the reading of the Independence Declaration on the 7th, it has been a city gone quite mad. Hey! I'm going to have them pull down the statue of King George III! Henri, stay here. You're nothing but a magnet for trouble. Anywhere you go, bad things happen. Do not. I think you'd better listen to James. You two are just jealous because I have more fun than you do. Down with George! Independence! Of what possible good is a broken statue? I heard they're taking it up to a cannonball factory in Connecticut. And why on earth would they go to all that trouble? General Washington told his staff that he intends to return the lead in the statue to the British troops as soon as possible. Seems pretty boastful. General Washington's been commander-in-chief of the Continental Army a whole year and has yet to fight a battle. I think he'll get his battle soon. A big one. Your telescope, sir. There. That's where we'll strike General Washington and his army. On the heights, we'll drive these pesky rebels into the river and have our troops home in time for Christmas. I thought you would be more comfortable eating here. Nowadays, the streets are so unsafe. <coughs> this collar is unsafe. <gasps> I don't know where all those dreadful persons on the street have come from. I've never seen them in this neighborhood before. <coughs> Out-of-town troublemakers would be my guess. As Mr. Radcliffe used to say, this rebellion business will soon get out of hand. I'm sorry I won't get to see Mr. Radcliffe this trip. My mother used to enjoy his stories. You said he's in... Uh, uh, Canada? Yes. Seeing to some timberland we are thinking of buying along the St. Lawrence. Well, I'm just glad the British fleet has arrived. The sooner General Howe puts things right, the sooner we can all get this silly revolution business over with and get back to normal. Oh, boy. Why were you making those faces at Mrs. Radcliffe's? I couldn't stand it. Seeing to some timberland, we're thinking of buying along the St. Lawrence. Stop that. It's impolite. 
I saw a list of Tories at General Washington's headquarters. Mr. Radcliffe's name was on it. You don't mean the army is going after private citizens? No, but some other private citizens might. And I think Mr. Radcliffe and some of his friends thought it best to leave until things blow over. I don't think things will blow over very soon, if our Henri has anything to do with it. Hey, get boy! <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think Henri believes this is all just a big party for his benefit. Uh, Sarah, don't look now, but I think someone has his eye on you. Oh, don't be foolish. Awfully busy, isn't she? Yes, she thinks she's a journalist. Miss, allow me to introduce myself. I am Udney Wolf Hutchinson from Milford, Connecticut. My comrades in arms and I have arrived to defend this city and ladies such as yourself from the cruel, vindictive English. I am English myself, sir. Does that make me cruel and vindictive as well? Uh, I was only repeating terms some of our rougher members commonly use to refer to the enemy. Whether they are cruel and vindictive or gentlemen, they are soldiers, and I offer my strong arm for your protection. <laughs> Forgive me. Duty calls. You've got to be kidding. Didn't he say his name was Ugly? It was Adni, and you know it. Ah, uh, phew. Where are you going? With you and the soldiers over to Brooklyn to watch the battle. Sarah. I'm a journalist, too. Remember, Concord? Your promise to Ben? Dr. Franklin, I won't put myself needlessly in danger. What is it with you and your need to imitate people? All right, let me put it this way. You can't go. You're not my mother. She's right. You're not her mother. Hmm. No, but I'm responsible to Dr. Franklin, and he's responsible to her mother. Besides, it's too big a story for both of us to be in one place. One of us needs to report on what happens in the city. Let's face it, you're more comfortable with tea and crumpets than me. I must admit, James, occasionally, you're right. General Washington sends reinforcements to the fort on the heights at Brooklyn to counter a large force of British troops heading for Long Island. All right, I'm going to Washington's headquarters. What about me? Can I go? No. no. We'll see about that. Sarah, who's that waving at you? Oh, it's that. Henri? General Putnam informs me that the British are moving up the Gowanus Road and Hessian troops have been spotted on the Flatbush Road. But there is still a substantial number in camp on the beach. I don't have to tell you what is at stake here, gentlemen. Everything worth living for. None of my boys will disappoint you, General. They'll throw the redcoats back onto their boats. General, if I may, this Jamaica Road concerns me. It's presently undefended. The enemy is here at the Gowana Swamp. And that is where I'll strike him. Sterling, I wonder if I could ask you a few questions. Yes, General Washington told me about you, Franklin's apprentice. Does it bother you that a good portion of the enemy is made up of Hessians? Well, son, the enemy is the enemy, whether they're British troops or German mercenaries hired to fight by the British. But to have no other reason to be here than to fight for money. 
No cause, no country, no freedom at stake. It doesn't seem right. I think you'll find they have as many reasons to be here as we do. Now, if you will excuse me. <laughs> Gentlemen, I have a special mission in mind. I need volunteers. Paid volunteers. I'm in, sure. What's the mission? In the interest of fairness, I think the readers of Dr. Franklin's newspaper should understand the thoughts of those loyal to the king. That's a dangerous point of view to have these days. Well, nevertheless, I'm interested in what you think about the revolution. I'd keep your name out of it. I think it's a dangerous, foolhardy adventure. Why do they want to fight to create their own country? They feel England has mistreated them. I've read this Declaration of Independence. Is it worth going to war because the king called for their legislative bodies to meet in uncomfortable places? That's just one of their reasons. And the men who signed it? What do they know about running a country? These New Yorkers here. Francis Lewis, a hat seller. Lewis Morris, a farmer from up country. William Floyd, I've never even heard of him. This Philip Livingston is such an insufferable blowhard, Mr. Radcliffe had to ask him to leave a supper we were giving for the governor. Dr. Franklin signed it too. Yes, I know. Even the brightest of men do foolish things from time to time. My dear, you yourself are English-born and bred. Our whole lives are tied to England. Our commerce, our culture, our laws, our religion, our education. Where do young Americans go to become doctors, lawyers, and clergymen? England. In what language are you writing your article? English. Exactly. Oh, my. It started. Oh, dear. May God protect us all. Looks like General Sullivan was right about the attack. It's way over there by Gowanus Swamp. Um, I was wondering, why did you take money from Lord Sterling? I thought Hessians were the only ones who fight for money. We fight for a cause. James, I believe in our cause as much as the next man, but I haven't been paid in a long time. Everyone needs a few coins. And goodness knows Lord Sterling has plenty to spare. Believe me, there's not enough money on earth to make men face fire like that, but they're doing it and my time will come. That's a rider, coming fast, too. British regulars, they're right behind me! Lord Sterling was right. They're using Jamaica Road for an attack. Come on! Ah. You say you're a spy? On the staff of General Washington himself? You're just a child. That is the beauty of it. Everyone thinks that and pays me no mind. What better disguise for a spy? Over there! There we are! After them! Halt! General Washington, the entire right is falling back on Gowanus Road. On the left, General Sullivan has been flanked, and he cannot hold. Where? The Jamaica Road. Lord Sterling's troops held out as long as they could, but now they're pulling back to the heights. They're running? Why are they running? Because they can't fly. After today, I don't know if I'll ever sleep again. How do you think General Washington did? All's I know, General Washington goes a year without a battle. First one comes along, and the best we can do is run away. Nobody could stand up to what the British threw down that road. Well, we sure didn't. 
What now? I don't know. I just hope we don't have to surrender. General, the reports say the troops that survived the attacks are safely back onto the heights. How many didn't survive? We don't know yet. Lord Sterling was captured. Casualty estimates are high. There's more. What else? They captured General Sullivan, too. Hmm. General Howe is welcome to him. Boats. All the boats we can find. We are leaving the heights. In the morning, sir? Now. Listen, I am not even a colonist. I am European, like you. We think you are a spy, and until we think something else, you're not going anywhere. A spy? What an idea. I am just a kid. Is that everyone? Yes, General. We're the last. The rest of the troops have already escaped in the boats. <sighs> General, our retreat at night in the face of the enemy will be seen as the work of a military genius. I'm afraid this retreat is a very unmilitary thing to do. We were licked plain and simple. I wasn't ready for them. There's something you don't see every day. Are these reports correct, Captain? The Colonials abandoned the entire fort last night? Yes, General Washington sailed off under the cover of fog and darkness. It seems General Washington doesn't believe in the accepted conventions of war. You lose the battle, you surrender. James, you're back. Pardon me. Are you all right? I'm fine, really. Well, what was the battle like? It was pretty bad. But General Washington safely snuck the whole army away during the night. Where's Henri? Isn't he here? We haven't seen him since you left yesterday. I thought he caught up with you. I wonder where he... Oh, no. Henri, where have you been? Nowhere. What have you done? Nothing. What kind of trouble did you cause this time? Me? Trouble? Do we really want to know? No. Where are you going? Since Washington's retreat from Long Island weeks ago, General Howe's done nothing, until today. That cannon fire has been going on all day. James said something was up at Kipps Bay, and I bet he's there already. Want to bet? Sarah! <gasps> Henri! We lost again! You were there? No, I found Ugly and he told me what happened. Is Udney all right? Yes, why? I thought you didn't like him. Well, I was just wondering, that's all. So what happened? Well, Udney told me... We was waiting at Kipps Bay, and the British opened fire. General Washington told us to stand our ground. But I guess it was too much for some of us. The officers couldn't stop them. Stand your ground! Return to the ramparts! Stand your ground, you... How am I to win a war with men like these? General! <laughs> you must come away! You can't win a war by retreating! 
Or can you? So that's Udney's story. It's not a proud day for our revolution. What's Washington going to do now? I'm puzzled, General Howe. What kind of commander fights a battle and after losing, instead of surrendering, retreats to fight again? Evidently, this American General Washington. <laughs> Another dispatch from James. Let it be good news for a change. It seems we still have quite a few troops, and General Washington has moved them all to a fort on Harlem Heights. This has turned into a new kind of war, an American war. General Washington is going to fight a delaying action, hoping to wear down the British while giving himself time to build and train an army. An army that fights with little or no pay. Few supplies, few weapons, but with a belief that they are Americans. And Americans will fight and die for freedom, nothing less. P.S. Some soldiers are putting up a flag on our new flagpole. There's not much wind today, so the flag is just hanging there. But it's still there. Yeah! <laughs>